Hey everyone, it's Kayvon with Ascari Art. So I'm super excited today. We're going to do a small little alcohol ink demo. Um, this demo is going to be a little different. Now, what I mean by that is we're going to use two types of paper. One is going to be the Yupo that I'm used to using. And the other one is going to be a new paper that's to me, it's new to me. It's called Nara. Now, Nara is used in the alcohol ink community. Um, and I have a sheet and I've got actually other products of Nara that I want to test in future videos. But in this video, we're going to be comparing two 12 by nine inch um, pieces of paper that are going to be roughly about 430 microns thick. Now, what I mean by that is the thickness is almost like a postcard and you can kind of see it here. So we're going to get started and we're going to learn about this paper and the comparisons together. All right, so let's get started. So I've got 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol. It's actually 99.5%. And I've got it poured in these little containers here. And I also have uh, uh, a little Giotto uh, lens cleaner that is over here. So I use this a lot, especially for smaller pieces. But I also have a larger blow dryer. We're going to switch this blow dryer out with a smaller one. Uh, let me just get that ready for you. And this blow dryer is typically better for smaller pieces because we don't want the blow dryer to blow it off. It's just a Baby Bliss Pro TT. Um, it doesn't have a hot and cold setting. It's only um, hot and you only have high and low. So, uh, you know, I, I in an ideal situation, I like to have a cold setting, but in this situation, since we're doing a painting demo, uh, we're going to do uh, just what we, with what we've got. So the lens cleaner and this deal. So um, the links will be description below my YouTube video, so you could check it out there and the colors. So the colors are going to be important because I'm going to try to pick colors that stain the worst. And some of those colors are dark colors with high amounts of dye. So one is Copic. Most dark blue, um, black Copic colors will stain. And then I'm going to use Pitch Black by Tim Holtz. That typically stains. And we may throw in, you know, just for uh, pleasantries, we'll throw in a Courant, which is a dark purple by Tim Holtz, just to see how that reacts. And if we have time, we'll throw in some gold, uh, just to see how that moves. Uh, I've got that here as well. Uh, and the gold that I typically use is by Pinata, and it's called Pinata Brass. So it's not a Pinata Gold; it's Pinata Brass, and that's the closest to gold that I that I like. So, um, and you typically have to mix it, and you'll hear that little ball in there. All right, so we've got what we need. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try the first demo. Now the first demo that I mentioned was I'm gonna put alcohol down first on both and then we're going to drop in the blue by Copic. This is called a uh, Antwerp blue and it is a B37 just for anyone who would like to know and we're going to use the Giotto lens cleaner for now. So I can already tell um, based on what I'm seeing here on the Yupo versus the Nara, the Nara is not staining. You can see the stain right there. It's like a yellow stain. Now, on the Yupo, you want to make sure that you're using the correct side. Sometimes they have a front and back side. So I'm not sure exactly which side I'm using, but let's do a quick test. So we're going to let this dry, okay? Um, and then I'm going to test it on the other side of the, the Yupo as well to see if I've got the correct side. Now, on the Nara paper here, it's moving beautifully. Like, I, I'm not seeing any stains, um, and it's letting me move it beautifully. Now, from an archival standpoint, I'm not sure if their paper is rated archival. Um, I'm pretty sure it probably is, but it's always good to test and make sure check and make sure so we're gonna so when I leave the alcohol here um, a little too long I'm gonna leave it here and then move on to this one 
and I am getting some really beautiful colors out of the Yupo. You, I, I don't know if you can tell here. Let me see if I can zoom in. Let's see. Let's see if I could zoom in here. And I'll zoom in so you can kind of see them both on post. But you can kind of see it here. There's some beautiful left colors that are being left behind. And on the Nara, you're getting what you're getting. Like it, it doesn't really, it's, it's blue, you wanted blue and you're getting blue. There's no um, differences in color here that I'm seeing on the Yupo. So from, now I'm not sure exactly if the Yupo is doing something that's extracting the color. Like I'm seeing violet, like ma magenta and purple and even yellow green. Now we're gonna let this dry a little bit. Okay, and as I let this dry, let's, let's speed up the drying process here. So we're gonna apply heat to both and see if any of it curls. All right, so it's dry. Now, what I'm gonna do quickly to make sure that I am on the correct side of the, the Yupo paper is that I'm going to actually go in and flip it just to do a quick test to make sure that I am on the right side. Because I wanna make sure that I'm giving it its equal you know, footing in this comparison. Let's open up my ink really quick and drop an ink, drop down. I've seen this before, but I'm not sure if it's actually true. So please comment if you've experienced uh, different sides of Yupo, if you've tested it to see if the different sides actually make a difference. And as far as I can tell, it looks like I didn't use enough alcohol for this. Let me just add a little bit more. So we're... No, so... I could still see some, now it is still wet, but I could still see some uh, of the same characteristics that's happening here. So I think we're good. So I wanted to just make sure that we're not you know, using the wrong side, um, but I've had that experience before and I don't know why. So if you know why that's possible, then let me know, please. Um, okay, so now we've, we've let this first coat dry. So now I'm gonna go back and retest this. So we're going to go back and put uh, more alcohol down to see if we can move it. So we're gonna put a line of alcohol here and a line of alcohol here. And I'm using the Giotto to see if I can remove it here. And I'm using the Giotto. Now look how beautifully, um, I'm gonna let this one soak a little bit and move it around. And I'm gonna let this one move around as well. Now typically when I'm doing a painting, I have a really good idea of what I want. Now, it's not always going to go that way. That's why you wanna be able to uh, move the ink around um, without staining in most cases. And sometimes the staining is okay, but in most cases, since the painting is so small, um, it, it's, it hurts you, you know? Um, now, the characteristics of Nara so far, from my experience, it feels like it's acting like the plastic poster board that I use from Michaels. It's so synthetic that it allows me to lift the color flawlessly and, and it gives me the feathered effect. Now for the Yupo, now I'm gonna add a little bit more alcohol here on the edge inside on both. And let's, let's see if we can move this around to where it doesn't stain. Now, again, for the Yupo, I'm seeing some interesting things happen where I'm seeing some base colors of pinks and yellow greens that are appearing. Now, that is, I mean, it's beautiful. I think it's a preference, honestly, um, but I'm not really seeing a major amount of staining. Now there is a little bit, um, but it's not as much to where it would bother me to where I would not want to use it. Now, pricing would obviously determine the use of each of these papers. Now, if you're using if you're doing a painting and you're not really familiar with uh, alcohol inks and you wanna do something small for the house or you wanna practice, then I would pick the, 
the cheapest one to practice with. But if you're doing a painting and you want the colors to be true because the client says, hey, I want a small painting of yours. I don't want any surprise colors. I hate yellow, I hate pink, I only want blue. Then I can see where you would be worried a little bit in this one because you could kind of see a little bit of the yellow come out of this blue. Um, and it's not a, it's, it's almost like a creamy gr yellow green. It's really weird. And I've got lines of purple. Here, I do have some lines of violet that I'll zoom in to show you, but in most cases, I'm not seeing that, that other color. Now, this color may be because it's actually stained. So let's do this. We're gonna, I'm gonna add ink, or I'm sorry, alcohol to the area right here to see if I can move it away to see if anything happens. Let's see if I can get it to recede back. And sure enough, it's not. So that means it is actually staining the paper. Now that you can use that to your advantage, um, but in most cases, like I mentioned earlier, you may not be able to because you just don't know or the client doesn't like a particular color. So it's, it's beautiful in the fact that it gives you uh, some sort of gradient effect with a color that you did not expect. So we're gonna leave this like so. And, but again, the effects that I'm getting from here, um, the alcohol, they, it seems like the alcohol does not last as long on the Nara. It tends to evaporate quicker because the paper, I guess, is not absorbing as much of it. Um, uh, so it's sitting on top and it's allowing it to evaporate quicker. And I'm noticing that now as I'm trying to do both. This one, like you can tell, the alcohol, I put a lot more alcohol in this one, so um, it's gonna take a little while longer because I'm trying to see if I can get rid of that, the yellow blue, but it doesn't seem like I can. All right, so that is the stain. So we're gonna let this dry, we're gonna let both of them dry. Uh, I may have to play with this a little more to give it a little bit more of an effect. And now I'm also trying to do two paintings at the same time. So that is not an easy feat. Um, it may be for some of you, but not for me um, because I'm, they're both starting to look different and I'm looking at composition and figuring out like, hey, which, which, which is gonna look better. And I do have moisture in the air a little bit. And you can kind of see moisture on both. You can kind of tell the jagged lines on the edges and it's okay. You can always correct that if you use a brush like I do but um, it's, it's, it's all right. It's just a, just a different way of painting. Uh, okay, so we've got, we're gonna let this dry a little bit. Now I'm gonna come in with the black. So this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Tim Holtz black and I'm gonna put the black down first and then I'm gonna use alcohol. I'm gonna add alcohol to it and then try to move it. So let's do it on Nara first. So we're gonna do, from a compositional perspective, I'm gonna put black right here and I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit while it spreads, and then I'm gonna add alcohol to it. So we're gonna push the alcohol this way. And I'm curious to know if the alcohol stays, the ink stays true to its color of it being pitch black, but we'll see. And I apologize if you can hear my kids screaming in the background. I've tried to, uh, my wife is helping me with that, so I appreciate it. Mary, I love you. Thank you for helping me, allowing me to do this video. Okay, so as I'm letting this dry, we're gonna let kind of this kind of push out and around. And we're gonna bring it into the, the blue a little bit. Now I am noticing that the, the, the paper is kind of curling up and I'm not sure if that's because uh, the blow dryer um, I don't know if the alcohol is causing it to react this way where it is kind of curling up right here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, let's move these up so you can kind of see. So um, I'm not sure. I'm not using too much heat. Uh, I just used the blow dryer one time, but it's okay. It's, uh, this is a test, so we're learning as we go. Let's use the heat now and kind of move this around. Now the true test is going to be to let this dry and then add alcohol to it to give me this fade. So I wanna fade this back up into the ink. 
I feels like the fact that this isn't staining, it's a lot easier to uh, do your effects that you'd like. Because like I can do these rings really nicely, this uh, this really nice uh, ring wispy effect with the rings. But I'm gonna cut through it in a minute with the alcohol. So, all right, so we're gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing with the Yupo paper. So in this part, I'm just gonna put it in the same spot right around here, okay? And I am going to add here, so we're going to add alcohol inside of it, and we're going to use this to kind of move it around. It feels like the paper, I, mean, I need to add a little bit more because I don't feel like I'm fair to the other paper since I didn't add as much. So let's do that. Let's bring it the alcohol back in. So I can see some of these beautiful colors coming out of the Yupo paper, um, out of this ink. Um, I'm seeing magentas and uh, you can, now you can do the wispy effect on both papers. You just have to keep moving it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But I'm seeing some really pretty colors emerge out of this. I'm not sure if you can tell, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it, but there's some red magenta rust color coming out of this black. And this is caused by the substrate. I'm using the same alcohol, same percentage on both. And you can kind of see the fact that this one has the fine lines of rust, but it's not as pronounced as, as the, uh, the one on the Yupo paper. All right, so now we're gonna let this dry. And I'm gonna come in and add alcohol on the edges to try to see if I can push it back. And I hope this demo is really helping you understand the differences between the two papers and maybe some of the frustrations that you may be feeling as you're painting. You may start seeing um, just differences in the types of substrates. The, the substrates, and when I say substrate, I mean the, the type of material that you're using to paint on. That's what substrate means. So um, canvas would act differently than these two. Plastic poster board may act very close to the Nara paper. Um, linen acts completely different than all four. It acts completely different than canvas, um, paper, the different papers. So I think it's, it's really good as an artist to experiment on the different mediums to see what you like and how it's helping you do your art. But the object is to not get frustrated because if you start getting frustrated, you need to leave it alone um, and, and move forward. And sometimes if you are having issues uh, with staining, the issues may not be because of the, the substrate. The, the issues may be because of the ink that you're using. So if the ink it may not be a true alcohol ink, it may be a different type of alcohol ink, um, the ink may have too much water in it, or it could be by accident, it could be an India ink, or a different type of ink that may not be really suitable for this type of painting. But you gotta test and learn and, and just do it um, just just keep doing your tests, try different things, especially from different parts of the world. You may experience different types of materials that you may not have uh, at, in the States. So that all matters that you have to do with what you got. So, okay, so on the Nara here, we're gonna try adding alcohol here on the edge. And I'm gonna see, and I'm adding quite a bit because I wanna see if I can let it sit a little bit and I'm gonna see if I can lift it. Now, as I mentioned, these colors that I'm using are pretty high in pigment. Or, I'm sorry, not pigment, dye, because alcohol inks do not have pigment. They're, they're called dyes. Now, as you can see here, this paper is staining because I am seeing leftovers from, from the black that I used. It is a blue leftover. It is slightly blue, gray. And, but it's very faint, but it is staining. It is not stain resistant, because if it was stain resistant, I don't know if you're gonna be able to keep the ink on it at all. Um, I know that um, from a synthetic um, perspective, it is more resistant, more, uh, less stain resistant than the Yupo, but we're gonna test that right now. So we're gonna try to push this out 
and I am seeing that I can see some very faint lines and I'm leaving the alcohol in there to see if I can lift these blue lines out. And some of them, again, I like the, the very faint lines, very faint um, look on the outside, but some people may not because they may be doing flowers and they don't, they don't want you know, that kind of faintness on the edges. Now again, this is a 430 micron uh, NARA paper, so it is pretty dense. Um, and you can see here, I'm gonna push it out, push it back in. And we're gonna add a little bit more alcohol to see if I can lift that back, back in. And it's wet right now, so it's hard to tell. It looks like it is slightly staining. Um, and I'm gonna try to see if I can bring my camera in later after I'm done with this painting to kind of show you. But this is why I'm doing this comparison because I really wanna show everyone the differences between these two papers. They're both great papers. I don't have anything negative to say about any of them so far. Everything seems to be working really good for alcohol ink, okay? So they're both, they both work really well. Just the characteristics are a little different and they're causing the alcohol ink to just work differently. So now we're gonna go to the Yupo and do the same thing. I'm gonna add a bunch of alcohol on the edge here and I'm gonna wait for it just like I did, probably about four or five seconds before I start pushing it around. I wanna make sure that I give it the amount of time. I wanna make sure that this one has some really nice effects. Okay, so we're gonna come back here and now we're gonna to try to see if we can move it around. Now, this one, the black is tricky because the black does have a lot more dye and you can see the staining difference. Like, surprisingly, this one is not lifting as well as I had hoped. Um, as you can see here, it is leaving a very, very dense amount of stain on the edge. And the stain is not, it's, it's almost like a yellow stain. It's not black, it's not blue, it doesn't even match. It, there is lines of blue, but the paper itself is um, less forgiving. Now, in my case that I've learned, I typically move it around and push it and to see if I can help it cover up the stain because I, I have an idea. So depending on your experience level of painting, you can, you can always work with the stain. Um, but if you're a beginner, I'm starting to see, now there's colors that are coming out of this that you do not see in the, the Nara paper. Now, because the, now the colors are showing through on the dense edges, but this is showing up on even the light side. And it is staining. Like I can see the black showing magenta and yellow and blue. Um, and then that'd be, that might be something that you can play with to get the stain to kind of blend in. Like, see what I'm doing here? I'm kind of pushing it around to see. It does give you more color variation, um, but it does, it does stain, as you can see here. So we're gonna go back to this side now. We're gonna do, we're gonna do this Courant color. Now, I need to let this dry a little bit, so let me be true to this one compositionally. I wanna play with this a little bit more on the Nara. So let's do a low and let's push this out. We're gonna start bringing in the brush in a minute because I do wanna make these two paintings really cool uh, just, just for this demo purpose because this is supposed to be a painting demo as well as a comparison to kind of show and I wanna be true to <laughs> what I say in my videos of what it's supposed to be, so. So right now we're just moving the ink and I'm just using a blow dryer to kind of push these colors out and among. And again, the, the colors are staining as well, but they're more subtle stains of the blue and the true nature of that magenta that's coming out of the black. It's not this weird yellow that you're seeing here. Um, I'm gonna push this out to here. And on this one, we're gonna add.
This truly does act closer to the plastic poster board that I use for my demos, my practice. Um, we're using heat on this blow dryer to kind of show you if heat does make a difference um, in the staining. And we're gonna use a brush to see if this stain can actually be lifted. So that's the another test. Let's try that in a minute. Um, okay, so, all right, so let's use a brush. We're gonna use a brush that's, um, it's just a finer point brush. It may have some color in it. And I'm gonna pour some alcohol in a cup and, and I dip my brush in that alcohol cup. Now this, this has a little bit of color in it. Let's pick a cup that's not as dirty. Um, there we go. So we just pour a little bit of alcohol here in this cup. Um, I'm not sure if you can kind of see it. And I'm using this brush. I'm not sure what color's on it. I think it is black or violet that was already on it. So I'm gonna clean this brush. Now for this demo purpose, I would clean these brushes before I start applying the brush. But for this particular case, since it is a quick alcohol ink demo, and I'm not really, I don't really care about the color that's on here because it's not for a client. We're just gonna do this test. So let's see if we can move some of these lines in and see if it starts letting me move and lift the color off. And so what I like to do is kind of play with these lines. It's, it's working gorgeously. Like I don't have any issues I can lift, let's, let's see if we can lift this edge here and kind of push it back. Now this alcohol is not clean, obviously, and this brush isn't the cleanest. But you can see if I use a brush, I can actually use it to pick up the paint and move it around, which is really nice. So I'm really liking this paper, the Nara paper so far. I don't dislike the Yupo. I think the Yupo is great for what it is, but the Nara paper uh, allows me to do some cool stuff. Um, just like the plastic poster board that I use for demo as well. But if you're, in, if you're not in the States and you wanna use this as a commission and you, wanna, you want the commission to act just like the plastic poster board that you're practicing on, then this is a really, effective paper for that and because the other reason is because I'm not sure if plastic poster board is not really archival you know it's just an arts and crafts kind of thing I believe the Nara paper is archival and what, what I mean by archival is it's not going to yellow after 10 years or five years so if you're one of those artists that like really wants to use this kind of paper and you want to make sure that it lasts a long time for a client or whatnot then I would recommend uh you know, doing that. Now, for this particular piece, I'm just kind of moving, connecting the ink, the lines together like I typically do. And I wanna see if I can push this ink, uh, push this back in while trying to guide the ink, the alcohol. And can I lift the ink can I lift the stain with a brush? And it seems like I can if I just, yeah, you can. So the blue stains that I was talking about, you can actually use a brush to lift it and move it around. So that's really nice. Um, so it's not really staining per se. It's, it's just dye that's left over that you need a little bit more pressure to, to lift. And we're gonna push, we're gonna bring this color. See, anywhere my brush goes won't help it create a line. So as we're doing this demo, um, I'm, I'm right now messing with the, the Nara because I really am enjoying working on this paper, it's not a bad alternative to 
what I typically use. It's actually, it gives me a little bit more control because of the, the lack of staining. So right now, you know, obviously I'm just kind of playing, um, practice mindset, like I said, not, you know, trying to do a masterpiece. And if it turns out to be a really nice thing, then great, but I'm not really focused on making this work compositionally, I'm just trying to, trying to do different things. So now let's try this on the, the Yupo paper. I'm gonna try to create some brush strokes and see if I can get rid of some of the staining with a brush like I did on the previous end. I mean, black is a tough color, so I don't blame it. It does, it is staining. You can see the yellow is already there. And I can push this out and kind of make it feel like it's, you know, part of the painting. Uh, but in most cases, like see how I'm kind of moving the ink around to kind of give it that effect. And we're gonna come over here and start making more lines. And we're gonna push some of this ink back out. So what I'm saying is, what I'm trying to get at is, you can make both work just one of them gives you a completely different effect than the other. And you can make, see, I can make it very soft on the edges if I don't push too much ink into those edges. But you are getting some really cool color surprises. Like the stain is actually a really nice warm cream color um, that adds to some of the complexities of of how alcohol inks act, right? Like they, this is not a, this is not any different than what a canvas would do. Canvas would stain too, but not to this level. And the colors that you get from the canvas are sort of sometimes surprises, just like you see here. So it is a different medium. It is a different substrate. Um, it doesn't act like oil or acrylic or anything like that. Um, the colors can be surprising. So we're gonna, push this out. I don't know if you can kind of see what I'm trying to do here. The pleasant surprises are that you can fade those stains and play with those stains and get them to actually work for you. But if you're looking for something that's pure white, you have to kind of constrain and um, kind of have a little bit more control with where you put the ink and how far you spread it out. Because, you know, if you're, if you're not familiar with that, then you're gonna have issues. Now, I'm gonna kind of play with this color here, push this out. I wanna try to give it as much equal time as I did the Nara. So compositionally, I'm just kind of playing with what we can do here. Where's my blow dryer? We're gonna use the heat as well. I'll kind of see if I can. Now, if you use too much heat, if you use too much heat, it will curl up. Any paper will do this. It's not, it doesn't matter how thick, eventually it will curl. So you just wanna be very cautious, uh, just, just be very cautious with it. Don't hold it, don't use a heat gun, because a heat gun will curl it up. The temperatures on a heat gun are far higher than any blow dryer that you'll get. So you just wanna make sure that you're using the right type of material. So we're gonna cut through this blue to see what we actually see here. What will we get? Now I didn't clean my brush obviously, so you're gonna get some other effects from the black, but it's okay. I'm just kind of moving. I need more.
I'm just guiding the alcohol with the brush. I'm trying to just give it When it dries off, then it's not going to lift as much. So that's why we... we just be really cautious as to... So let's try this right now. So the pigment is a little bit more... Or I'm sorry, the ink is... It, it is a little died down a little, it's thinned down a lot. So as you can see here, if I rub my finger, it's, it's still stained a little, you know? But you can use that to your advantage. I, I think as an artist, you have to just figure out what you want and then use the paper that will help you achieve what you want, you know? So they're both good for the t different types that you wanna do. Now, if you don't, if you don't like the staining and you don't, like that to work for you in different ways, then I'd suggest um, using the the Nara, actually. So, all right, so you can see here, let me see if I can get a close up. Let's add gold too before I start, before I show you. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna add gold right in this middle. So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna pour a drop of this stuff. I need to mix it again because it settles to the bottom. The pigment will settle to the bottom. All right. So I'm just gonna drop a drop uh, where I think it should be. So we'll, we'll just drop one here in this middle. Okay, that's a drop. And then for this one, we're gonna drop it right there. Now for the gold, the idea is for to not, don't let it stay for too long. And I'm gonna use the brush to kind of help it and guide it while it's still good. Because it is sort of a, it's more of a clumpy kind of, um, the, the gold is more of a, it's, it's, it's got like almost a glitter effect in it that causes it to clump up. And you can kind of help it by lifting it up with a brush and pushing it around. And if you don't like certain things about the gold, you can always kind of gather them around a certain edge. See how I can lift, lift it with a brush and kind of move it by using a little bit of alcohol or a blending solution would work as well. Um, and I'm using the brush to kind of lift it off the, this paper, but I'm also using, like, let's say if I want some of that here in this edge, you can do that. Now let's play with this one before it dries. So let's see if we can lift this just like we can the other one. And you can, you see how it's allowing me to move it around. I just need more alcohol in there to kind of allow it to move because it does, it does clump up pretty quickly. I honestly, after using both of these, I do like the Nara paper. Um, the only issue I have with both, I, I, I like both of them, okay? So don't get me wrong, I do like both because they all, they both have a different um, characteristic that'll help you paint the way you like. So if you're the type of artist that likes to put all the colors down and move them all simultaneously without the fear of staining, then I would recommend the Nara. But if you like to add layers like I do where I'm adding different layers at different times and I want to be able to kind of layer them together um, and mix them together without worrying about the bottom layer lifting as much, then I would use the UFO. So um, there is like the dis differences between these two right now is as I'm adding alcohol, I am kind of moving the bottom layers and making them dissipate um, because of the style that I'm using to show you what can be achieved from these two papers. But um, in the end, I think 
it's all depending on what the artist is trying to achieve, like I mentioned earlier. So, But I do like the fact that on this particular one, it is looking different. Like the, just everything about the way that the stuff moves on it is a little different than, it does, it does react like the plastic poster board that I use for practice. So I do like that. So if I was to go, like if a client wanted paper, for example, and they wanted it framed versus like a canvas or something, I would probably use this in a larger scale. Um, if I believe this is available in rolls that you can buy and you can cut whichever, however large you want for the, the painting, like you can pick your size and just cut it and paint on it. And I think it would, it would probably act the same way, obviously. All right, so as you can see here, the two paintings are significantly different. Um, we're gonna we're gonna see if we can add some of this current, like I said. So what we're gonna do is now that there's alcohol ink down on both, I'm gonna add the ink directly to it. Oh, I just used pitch black. Oops. No worries. We'll add this inside of the pitch black. How's that? And on this one, we're gonna do the same thing. I'll just add pitch black into that as well to kind of play with the color. And for this one, I'm gonna push it out that way, right? And on this one, we're just gonna let it, I don't want it to blend in too much into the, to the blue, so we're just gonna And then on this one, see how I'm gonna add it this way. Now you can see the current on, I don't want it to bleed, bleed, bleed too much into the blue, but it is because I'm trying to manage both. And that's always a challenge. Letting both kind of sit for a little bit to see how the gold pulls, how the gold reacts. Now, the fact that this one is curling a little more, like you can tell it's curling right here and right here, and this, the Yupo is not, um, which is really interesting. I think the, the Nara is actually a slightly thicker. So I don't know if it's because it's got more synthetic plastic in it that's causing um, for it to curl up like this, but that. Um, you could probably tape it down, but then the problem is the curls will come in the middle of the of the paper. So it's a natural thing. Even with poster board, it'll do that. Um, not that I'm saying that this is poster board, but I'm just saying that from the characteristics that I'm learning from it as I paint to it, it feels like it's acting the same way. Um, let me add some more blue for this. I'm just now. I'm just kind of playing with both. I want to make sure that I get something really cool as I'm spending time to do this demo. So.
can zoom in here so I can really show you the difference between the two. So this is Yupo, and you can kind of see the effects, right? So I've got this really crazy magenta yellow cream color coming out. You could see the gold, you could see the blue. The blue has that same stain uh, yellow cream. And then if you come over here on this end, you can kind of see um, how there is this, that same cream color, but it adds warmth to it. So, I mean, from a perspective of like a painting, I think it is beautiful for what it is. Now let's look at the Nara. The Nara treats the colors more true to the nature. They do still have a little bit of the color bleed, like you could see right here, you've got a little bit of that color bleed um, of the blue coming from the black. Now, and then look at the staining. There's hardly any staining. It, it does not stain as easy. Like I could have just lifted this back up if I wanted. Um, the brushwork is a lot easier. As a beginner, I think you would probably have more experience with a Nara. Um, and I think, so, so again, they both have their advantages and disadvantages. I really hope that this video helped you. If you like this video, please take a look at my other videos. Smash that subscribe button. It really helps me. Excited. Look for my other videos. Um, super excited. Thanks again. Till next time. Ascari Art.